You want to hold it really tightly. So right here where I've got the glue, I want to really hold that down really good. I use this, um, hold on, let me hold it. This is the glue I really love to use. It holds really well and it does dry very quickly. So I can get on with it. See, give that another second or two. Holding it where I've got it glued on the end. Of course, when I come back around, I'm going to go back over that. That spot right there that I've glued just to reinforce that. So you're going to hold your leather tight as you pull it around your ring. This takes a few minutes just to get it all the way around there. Now I've done some really large hoops. I've done hoops that are smaller than this. I've done some really little ones that I've turned into necklaces. And like I said, you can wrap your hoop in any kind of fabric or string or twine or leather, anything you want, really. Um, you want to wrap these hoops because it's really hard for, because once we start putting the sinew or the yarn around your hoop, this is not going to grab hold of that and it's going to move around on you quite a lot. So I like to wrap these hoops. If I'm using the metal hoops, then I'm gonna wrap them first. It's just gonna hold my twine in place when I start weaving. So it's almost there, getting it on around. You just wanna hold it really tight as you go around. Otherwise it'll be really loose and that will be terrible. See, that's trying to come undone. I'll probably put another bit of glue right there in a minute. And if you use other things for hoops, like if you use um, branches and sticks, soften those up and tie them into circles, you won't have to wrap those in anything. Of course, you can if you want to, but you won't have to because they're not going to be slippery and having the, the yarn or the sinew slide around your hoop. The stick will grab a hold of it. All right, see, now we're coming up on the end there. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue right there. Wrap it around that last time, and I'm going to wrap it around one more time where I started just to help secure that. Then I'm going to tie it off. First, let's get it around there one more time. So when I tie it off, I create a hoop however big I want. And I like to put a little bit more glue just in that spot. Bring it around and through. Just like that. And then pull it really tight. There we go. There's our hoop. Voila. <laughs> now you could take this piece and you could cut it off. Or I just like to go ahead and wrap it on around the top because I don't like the look of it when it's just cut off and I don't want that coming loose. So I'm just going to wrap that extra little piece around and hold that for a moment or two to let that glue dry. Again, let me show you the glue that I'm using. This is the glue that I use because it dries really well and it dries quickly. It works great for these. So now I have a little hoop to hang my dream catcher once I have it weaved. Now, once we start weaving, there's a very particular way to weave the dream catcher, but the beads. So this is what I'm using, sinew. You can get it at any craft store and this has lasted me years and years and years. I've had it for a long time. So while that's drying, you want to pull off enough to weave your hoop. I never know really how much. I kind of just guess because it wants to be one continuous string. I'm going to cut that off and we'll start that in a moment. 
But uh, many people bead them in different ways. Some people put just one bead. Some people will put multiple beads. That is completely up to you. Let me grab a bead while that's drying. <coughs> I've got a great big bag of natural wood beads. So let's find, I think I want this little bead right here. Oh, no, let's do a little red bead. I like the red ones. When I get done, I'm going to put that little bead on there. Now, we can put multiple beads if we want, but for this one, I'm just going to use one because it's a small bead texture. All right, here we go. If anyone's talking, I can't see you because I'm looking at this. <laughs> so, we're going to start our dream catcher at the top. And I'm just going to tie my sinew. You can use any kind of string if you want. I like to use sinew. It doesn't break. Um, you're just going to tie it in a good knot right at the top. I kind of like to do a, fish, a fishing line knot because those are not going to come loose at all. So pull that really, really tight. When I'm done, I'm gonna cut the excess off, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. So, this is how you start weaving your hoop. So you're going to do a little space and you're gonna come underneath and pull that through. And then we're gonna move it up to about there. And you can make your hoops around as wide or as thin as you want and for this size I think mm, I think that's probably close to an inch is about right that's I like that look now warning if you put them too close together your weave is going to be so tight that it's going to be really hard to do as you get closer and closer to the center so I'm just going to pull those tight and I'm going to hold each spot as I go around I'm going to stick that there and then I'm gonna go through and pull all of that extra through. Then I'm gonna move it to where I want it to be. And I'm gonna to try to keep them fairly equal distance apart. So let's do that again and again until we get all the way around. So we're gonna pull this um, about right there. Seeing how the, whoop, that's not quite, is it? That's a little bit small. Let's go over one more loop, one more section. There we go. There we go. So you're gonna hold that section. You're gonna put your sinew there like that or your twine, pull it through, move it into place, pull it tight. Go on to the next one. I've got glue on my fingers. Pull it all the way through. Then pull it tight. Do another one. We're gonna continue doing this until we get all the way around. And it looks like we've got about one more we can do. Get over there. There we go. So this is what it should like, look like at this stage with your first row of hoops. Now on the second row, we're going to rinse and repeat this all the way through. So we're going to go from the back, we're going to stick that sinew through, and we're going to go underneath that main piece. Pull it through and pull it tight. Then put your fingers there and hold that in place. Then we're gonna take the end again. We're gonna poke it through to the other side and come through like so. We're gonna go under our sinew and pull it through and pull it tight. Now we're gonna repeat this all the way around the hoop. 
put it through from the back, go underneath your main piece, pull it through and pull it tight. You can see it taking shape. Back through to the other side, pull it through, go underneath, and pull it tight. Then you hold that next section. Oh, let me, that's getting a little crazy. I like to make sure I cut my, my string extra long, so that way if the end does get a little bit frayed, then we can cut it off. Pull it through, go under the main piece, pull the slack out, and pull it tight. Do it again. Pull it through, go, come here, go under, pull out all the slack, and pull it tight. You can see we're almost back to the beginning. So we're just going to keep doing this until we get to the center. And now bead placement. You can place your bead wherever in the dream catcher you want. So if I wanted to go ahead and do one now, I could, but I don't want to. I'm gonna wait till it gets a little bit closer to the center. Your bead does not have to be in the center of the dream catcher. Like I said, it can be anywhere you want it to be. So I'll go from, the, from behind, come through, slip it back under that side and pull out all the slack and then pull it tight. So we're now, we're back at the beginning again. So we're gonna rinse and repeat. We're gonna do this a lot. You, every step of the way, you wanna make sure you're holding that section right there, right here. The last one you pulled through, you're gonna hold that good and tight. So otherwise it will kind of just fall in on you and it's just gonna be a tangled mess eventually. So we're gonna go through, come through the back, go under that main piece of string. Pull it through, pull it tight. And you're gonna see as I do this, that weave is gonna get tighter and tighter. I have done some dream catchers where I have the whole thing beaded, or maybe I have just one outside edge beaded, and then maybe some random beads in the center. You can do any kind of beading you want. I've done so many different ways, just according to what kind of design you want to do. Now, like the owl dream catcher I did the other day, I did two of these. I did, I did not put a hoop at the top. Um, I just did them with no hoop, because I added the hoop to, at the end once the two eyes were together. So for the owl dream catcher, I would do two hoops. And then after I have them both, both weaved, then I'm gonna connect them together. And of course, if you're doing an owl, you only want one big bead in the center, right? For his eyes. But for just a standard dream catcher, you can do as many beads as you want. If I'm doing a dream catcher for a purpose, the number of beads and the what kind of beads I choose is on purpose. Depending on whatever that purpose may be. So if someone's favorite number is seven and I know that and I'm doing a dream catcher for them, then I'm gonna do things in groups of seven. Maybe you use the, the numbers from their birthday or something like that. Just completely up to you. But with everything I do, I do it with a purpose in mind. So you're weaving your purpose <coughs> excuse me, into the dream catcher. So if I'm doing a dream catcher for someone I know is having nightmares, then I'm going to be seeing them not having any nightmares anymore once they receive the dream catcher. Now, here's an interesting story. 
So the person I gave that dream catcher to the other day, the owl, so they had just had a birthday on Sunday. And so I made the owl dream catcher for them and gave it to them on Tuesday. I didn't see them Monday. So I gave it to them on Tuesday. She went home that night, hung up her dream catcher. Now she had never had a dream catcher before, but she had this very elaborate dream that night about her, let's say her soulmate, her future partner. And it was a really nice, like a confirmation dream of they're not that far away. They'll be coming into her life soon and that it will be um, an easy match and an easy um, union. And um, then she told me about it the next morning. It was wonderful that she had that dream already. Now, the purpose of dream catchers, um, the story is told that dream catchers, you should hang them in a place. You do not have to hang them over your bed, by the way. You don't have to. Originally, yes, that's what people wanted to do with them, but you don't necessarily have to. You could hang them anywhere you want, but hang them in a place that catches the morning sun because as the story goes, all the bad dreams and bad thoughts get stuck in this web. All the good dreams and good thoughts will come right through the dream catcher, will not get stuck in the web. So those will be stuck in the web. The bad stuff will be stuck in the web and it will go away, be burned away by the morning sun. So you want to put them in a place where they can catch the sun at some point. You see now how my weave is getting really small? We're about to add our bead in just a moment. We're only going to be able to go around this thing a couple more times, I think. So for a dream catcher this small, I think I can get around uh, about five times before it just gets so tight that it we come to its end. And like I said, I could have put that bead at the very beginning if I wanted or anywhere along the way. You just have to feel it and see what you want to do. So there we go. We have that so far. Now I'm going to add the bead. Where'd my bead go? So let's stick it in this wooden little wooden bead. Let's get the glue off my fingers. Why don't we? So I'm just going to pull that little bead all the way there. Then I'm going to continue, continue weaving, stick it through, bring it through the next hoop and continue what we were doing. So when you put, pull it through that hoop, you're gonna go underneath your piece of sinew or yarn or twine or whatever you're doing. See, now that bead is firmly in place. So then I'm gonna go on to the next one. Go through the big circle and then right through your next section. We're gonna pull it through and pull it tight. So it's getting almost impossible now for me to even, like look how small that next section is. I'm not even gonna weave through that section cause I'm gonna finish this one out. So I'm going on, I'm gonna skip that tiny one and pull that one tight. See how now we're at the point where we're able to close up the weave. Close up the web. And we pull that one tight. So that made another really tiny one I'm just going to skip. Now some people, very traditional people, would be like, Oh my God, you skipped them. Oh, you're never supposed to. Look, you do what you feel like doing. <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So there we go. We have it all tied up. So what do we do with this at the end? I'm gonna tie it in a knot and I'm gonna cut off the excess. Some people will leave this long and put a feather attached to this part. Some people do that. And I've done it before. So I'm just going to go through right where I've got it. And I'm just gonna do it a few more times make sure that's good and tight so that's not going to come loose. Let's do it one more time. Go through that one, poke it through that one. Oh, 
let me move it where you can see it a little bit better. Pull it through and pull it good and tight. Now that's not going anywhere. So then I can just cut that little bit off right there. We can go ahead and cut this piece off. We don't need that. Don't need all of that. So there we have our dream catcher. All we have to do now, let me clear up my mess I've got made over here, is we need to add another piece of leather, another leather strip. And we can add as much leather stripping as you want. Um, let me find a nice long thin piece. Here we go. So I'm just going, this is a small dream catcher, so I'm just going to add one kind of right in the center, one piece. And I'm just going to tie it off. And you can tie it any way you want. For this one, I'm going to do them together like this. Pull that through. Now I want that a little bit tighter. Let me scoot it up a bit. I'm just trying to scoot my knot up a little bit more. There we go. So now I've got two pieces of, of leather. So then I can put a couple of beads on the leather there. And I put the beads on to hold the feathers on. And then I can add as many feathers to this that, as I want. So let's, let's do that. I think for this one... I'm sitting on top of my feathers, so hopefully. We need our beads back out, and I've got some little, where'd they go? I've got a little bag of little gold chip feathers. I'm going to use those. All right, so choosing your beads to go on to your leather, you want a bead with a large hole in it to fit through there. So let's see what I can find. Those aren't bad. Let's see, do I have two of those? Oh, that one's smaller. Hold on. I'm searching for beads. I'm trying to find two that are at least similar. You. Here we go. How you decorate your dream picture is entirely up to you. So I've got a couple of little beads. I'm going to push that through. Pull it up to where I want my feather. Put the other bead through, the other piece of leather through the bead. Hey, come back here. Oh. See, that side's not fully open, so let's open that up. There we go. Let's try that again. Once I'm, I can download this live, um, it'll probably be too long to put back on TikTok, but what I can do is put it up on my website, whyishealingpath.com. So we've got these cute little feathers with little gold tips on them. So these particular feathers, I can leave this whole thing here if I want, but they're so long, I'm going to cut those down. I'm going to put a bit of glue before I shove it up into that bead. There we go. Then let's cut another one. Oh, this is a good one. That's a nice one. 
I'm going to cut the shaft of that a little bit. It's just so long. It would just make your dream catcher look a little bit weird. So, and I'm, I'm staggering those, so I'm not going to put them side by side. I'm going to have it come down a little bit further. Oh, no, that one might be too big to ram in there. All right, that's not going to go anywhere. So... There we go. There we go. There's our dream catcher. Like I said, I think this video is definitely going to be too long for TikTok. So I will download a video and put it on my website, whyishealingpath.com, for anyone that wants to go and watch it. And I'll probably put it on YouTube as well. You can find the links in my bio. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching.